Hello, good evening, and welcome back. Tuesday, obviously, also the 20th day of February, and obviously a beautiful day in the neighborhood. A lot of excuses to be had to find your way outside, and I hope more so for you than I, because I've been in the studio much of the day, but every step out was a nice one. We did hit the 80s today. A lot of Eastern Kentucky did. I haven't seen the record standings as of yet, but I think we'll set a few and talk more about that at a later time. Weather-wise, tonight we'll talk about our luck running out and how uh, widespread and continued rounds of showers will add up to maybe four inches of, yeah, four more inches of rainfall over the next several days, and that could seriously cause some problems. It's already causing some issues, and we'll take a brief look tonight as that relates to one of our stories coming up tomorrow or later in the week in regards to what all the moisture and the thaw has done to some McGoffin County roads uh, and problems that some residents are facing. A little bit more on that in just a few seconds, giving you a glimpse ahead as well into the rest of the week. Uh, Governor Bevan was in Paintsville earlier today, as was one of our cameras, which has not made it back in studio as of yet. More to come on that front. I also, as I'm speaking to you, have a camera at tonight's McGoffin County Board of Education meeting in this week's Sagersville Independent. Several reports, one, uh, an exclusive in regards to finally some good financial news for the McGoffin County School District. Our editor has begun working on that report and we'll have more to follow uh, on Thursday in the next edition of the Sagersville Independent. Here is a glimpse at what some motors have been encountering. I'm going to guess a few hundred families uh, and motors which travel this section of road in McGoffin County and for the past year it's been a developing situation for the past couple of weeks it's been a treacherous situation and this is what we're going to be talking about a little later in the week and also some other possible conditions that uh, akin are akin to this situation on 378 in McGoffin County over the course of the past several days we received several calls of concern from several of our viewers uh, pertaining to a couple of different areas in McGoffin County, state and county roads, which have seen conditions deteriorate due to largely a lot of water and a quick thaw. And case in point would be this break in the pavement, as noted by the State Highway Department sign going down 378 across the Larkarnet Hill. This one is a good one. It was just filled as recently as yesterday by the State Highway Department, but as you can see as we even get closer, this would be a dangerous situation for motors should they get too close to the edge, the new edge of the roadway. The guardrail itself has now slipped off into uh, or over the embankment. I did speak with some state officials earlier today, and I'm set to uh, speak with them again or some others tomorrow to find out more about this situation. Now, this situation got real bad real fast. It's been like this for the past couple of weeks, and uh, tomorrow we'll try to find out exactly uh, when they hope to make some uh, repairs to the pro to this and what the process entails and the time that it takes for all of that to happen. There are also some county roads that we've been asked to look into as well in regards to situations there where a lot of moisture, a lot of rain, uh, and a quick thaw has also caused some serious conditions, motorists and school bus alike having to tread lightly. And we'll be bringing you those reports and those updates and a couple of those situations hopefully as soon as tomorrow, but definitely later in the week as we take a look at some McGoffin County roads. And if you have a uh, problem situation that you would like to add to our list, feel, please feel free to call the studio, 349-3699. Obviously a lot to be seen and a lot to be read coming up later this week. Moving on to tonight's headlines, a man made an appearance in McGoffin County Court yesterday in regards to an arrest that took place, as I, of course, told you, and we, as we hope you may have read as well in the Independent, what netted authorities the largest methamphetamine seizure in this county's history. Not this weekend, but the weekend past, of course, was the one where this Floyd County man was found after a long search. Kenneth Hayden of Blue River, 30 years of age, was found to be hiding in a creek after eluding authorities for a couple of hours in the downtown Royalton area. It was after he was involved in a single vehicle collision on Gun Creek Road. You may recall me telling you that the Gulf County Sheriff's Department started the case, if you will, upon trying to make a traffic stop and then encountering the flipped over vehicle that Hayden was believed to have been driving. And then state police later found Hayden uh, hiding in a creek uh, in his possession, over 145 grams of crystal methamphetamine, 15 grams of cocaine, uh, between on his person and in the pickup or the SUV he was in, they found loaded handguns, 
uh, other drug paraphernalia, and about $6,000 in cash. He was charged with leaving the scene, resisting, menacing, fleeing, and evading police, fell with a handgun, trafficking, and also served with several outstanding warrants as well. Hayden was brought from the Big Sandy Regional Detention Center earlier today for a court appearance in the McGoffin County Justice Center, where his case and his charges have been ordered bound over to the McGoffin County Grand Jury. Also, since being jailed in the Big Sandy Regional Detention Center, he has been transported to and from the Floyd County Detention Center to answer to charges there of, I believe, burglary, possibly theft, and other drug-related charges that he is facing, charges that he was served with upon being arrested here in McGoffin County, and those, I believe, at least two outstanding warrants. He is currently being held on a $25,000 cash bond. While state and local authorities continue to investigate where the drugs and the cash came from and whether or not anyone else may be involved or arrested. I'll be right back. Hello, McGoffin County. Matthew Wireman again, asking for your vote and support in the May primary for county judge. Living in McGoffin is tough. We know that, and so does everyone else. In fact, an article in the New York Times lists McGoffin County as one of the 10 hardest places to live in America. Folks, we know McGoffin County can do better than that. I want McGoffin County to prosper. I want to see opportunities for our people to work here at home. I want to see opportunities for our children to lead successful lives right here in McGoffin County. I want to see our local government operate as efficiently as possible so we can lower the county's taxes. I learned real quick that the Office of Magistrate didn't have any real power or influence. It doesn't open any doors in Frankfurt, and it doesn't open the eyes of potential businesses. The key to opportunity, the key to prosperity for McGoffin County is the Office of County Judge Executive. Elect me, Matthew Chimer Wireman, as your County Judge Executive, and together we will unlock McGoffin County's potential and show the world that McGoffin County is a great place to live, work, and raise our kids. Thank you. Hi, I'm Attorney Jeff Lovely. At my law office, we're determined to offer you and your family outstanding, cost-effective, and responsive legal services. I can help you if you've been injured in a car wreck. I'll be in your corner if you have a DUI or other criminal charges. I can file bankruptcy and stop those harassing phone calls. Or I'll fight for you and your children in divorce and custody cases. For all your legal services, contact me when it matters. In Sirensville at 349-4522 and West Liberty at 743-1965. Your best solution for diesel performance, upgrades, service, and repair is also a full-service repair center for all vehicles, gas, or diesel. From routine service to major repairs, with a trusted auto body shop for minor dings to full-on restorations and rebuilds. Plus, get all your 4x4 accessories, lights, bumpers, winches, and more at Black Smoke Performance in Dixie of Sagersville. 349-8785. Appalachian Wireless is showing the love to customers for the entire month of February. All month long, we've got 50 to 100% off retail pricing on today's hottest smartphone. Samsung GS8, retail price over $700. On sale now for $74.99. Samsung GS8 Plus, retail price over $800. On sale now for only $174.99. All smartphones are included. Just another reason to be a part of the region's best network. Better service, bigger savings. That's today's Appalachian Wireless and East Kentucky Network Company. To your agreement required, exclusive advantage plans while supplies last. See store for details. Need a family car? Need a work truck? Need something to haul with? Maybe to hunt with? Or to just get from A to B? Then call John Harris at Gateway Motors in Sagersville on the Mountain Parkway and get pre-approved with no money down and with most payments under 200 bucks a month. Gateway Motors in Sagersville, 349 cars. The flu has now reached proportions, and if you aren't or haven't been, will be. And Parkway Pharmacy has exactly what we all need to fight it and any other cold or illness. From immune boosters for adults and children as young as two to all natural homeopathics made right here in the United States of America. They can help prevent you from getting sick or get you fast relief if you already are. With great tasting and easy taking gummies, powdered mixes, rapid melting fruity tablets and syrups at Parkway Pharmacy. 
A new inventory perfect for the season at Parkway Gun and Pawn. Gas and electric space heaters, chainsaws to make your own heat, battery chargers, generators, snow blowers, and everything you need for the winter. And of course, jewelry, guns, games, TVs, electronics, and more. And of course, they'll loan you cash on anything worth a dollar at Parkway Gun and Pawn. 349 Pawn. Up next, two cases of abuse, domestic and criminal, says the state police and authorities, authorities being the Magoffa County Sheriff's Department, after two recent arrests. A Magoffa County man, according to arrest citations from the Magoffa County Sheriff's Department and details taken by the investigative officer, Sheriff Carson Montgomery, indicate that a man with a history of such charges and violence was arrested on assault in the second degree, domestic violence, burglary in the first degree, an authorized use of a motor vehicle in the first offense in violation of a Kentucky EPO. Now, this was a warrant that was actually signed by Judge Dennis Prater back on December the 21st of last year. It was then that Carson Montgomery, McGoffa County Sheriff, opened a case that he responded to in regards to an assault complaint on Back Branch and where a McGoffa County Sheriff's deputy made contact with a female victim who advised her that advised him rather that her estranged husband had come to the residence and assaulted her with a metal bar the victim and her granddaughter both with active emergency protective orders against fletcher at the time that ordered him not to have any contact with the residence or the location in question or anyone there specifically those two individuals the victim actually told deputy cook that she had been struck several times with a metal bar at the hands of fletcher and that she had suffered a large split in her arm that required stitches, a dislocated finger, as well as a broken leg, and also said that after the assault, Fletcher took the victim's car, rather, took the victim's DVR that records the security footage, any evidence of the crime, and told her that he would come back and kill both her and the police if she reported the incident. He then drove off with the granddaughter's vehicle, which he stole and had no permission to be in. The vehicle was actually later recovered in Jackson at the Walmart in the plaza parking lot there in front of the Jackson Walmart. He was arrested and is still lodged in the Big Sandy Regional Detention Center at this hour. No bond information was available as of airtime. And this man's victim is alleged to be under the age of 12. Yesterday, about 1 or 2 in the afternoon, state police from the Moorhead Post, Post 8, says they got a call for assistance from the Morgan County Sheriff's Department uh, Protection, rather from the Morgan County Department of Protection and Permanency. And during that joint investigation with the Morgan County Department uh, DPP, it was discovered that a minor had received injuries to her body. Now, of course, the citation doesn't go into detail as to what type the, of injuries they were or how they were inflicted. But as a result of the investigation, this man, 39-year-old Arthur L. Houndshell of Ezel, was arrested. So far, he's facing one count of criminal abuse in the first degree, a child or victim under the age of 12. He was too lodged in the Big Sandy Regional Detention Center while the case remains under investigation by Trooper Harley Catron. Hi, I'm Bill Mead and I've dedicated over half of my life to law enforcement and protecting my community and family. In my 29 years of service, I've received several federal accommodations for my part in major drug cases. I have 17 years experience in narcotics investigations. 10 of those years as a sergeant with the Kentucky State Police Drug Enforcement Special Investigations East Unit. I've received the highest level of training in criminal investigations and I know exactly what it takes to successfully see a criminal case through the state and federal court systems. As your McGoffin County Sheriff, I will review every investigation and ensure that you're treated with respect and dignity. My name is William Bill Mead. Number three on the ballot, but number one for McGoffin County. Thank you. To all of her current and future patients, Hope Family Medical Center and Big Sandy Healthcare are proud to announce that pediatrician Dr. Leslie Ann Dotson has joined Big Sandy Healthcare's new Physicians for Women and Families Complex in Auksher where she's now a part of a team of three OBGYNs, two family medicine physicians, and their nurse practitioners. That's Physicians for Women and Families, open Monday through Friday at 23 Willow Drive in Auksher, a part of the Big Sandy Healthcare family.
Yes, Logan makes the best truck bodies on the market, and they also have a fully stocked warehouse of dump body parts, PTOs, hydraulic pumps, hoists, anything you need to get back on the road. And they are a full service steel and aluminum service center. They keep I-beam, channel, angle, pipe, round rod, rebar, expanded metal, sheet metal, and aluminum all in stock. And if you've got a big project, they do commercial manufacturing to your specs. Logan, since 1904. I'm attorney Don McFarland. We all know that times are hard, jobs are scarce. Most people that I know are struggling to support their families and make it through each day. Now imagine that you get seriously hurt while working on the job and the insurance company for your employer refuses to pay wages and benefits while you are injured and cannot afford to pay medical expenses, household bills, and put food on the table to support your family. I can help. If you are being wrongfully denied workers' compensation benefits that you rightfully deserve, then give me a call and let me go to work for you. 349-9000. Conley's does oil and fluid changes, brakes, suspension, wheel alignments, and more. They've got thousands of tires in stock every day, and they won't be undersold on any tire they sell. They've got six months, same as cash, and over 37 years of service to the viewing area. With no appointment necessary, or you can call 297-2424. My dad, Philip Chubb Allen, was an appliance repairman who many of you knew. He instilled in me the values of honesty and integrity and to always keep your word. I'm running for change. I'm running for a brighter future for our children. I'm asking for your help. This election is one of the most important in our history. No matter which part of the county you're from, I'm your candidate. Let all of our citizens' voices be heard from every holler and every hilltop and every corner of our beautiful home. My name is Big Tony Allen, and I want to be your McGoffin County Court Clerk. Just like your savings, Hornet basketball is money in the bank. And from everyone at Sagersville National, congratulations and thank you to our Hornets and Lady Hornets for representing us so well this season and good luck in the 57th District Tournament. Go Hornets! Now to talk a little basketball, and there's a lot to talk about this time of year before I can get out the door and try to get to tip off and catch the rest of the game, which I am predicting to be an exciting game tonight. I think this is going to be a good one, one way or the other, regardless of the outcome. I think tonight's matchup between the Hornets and the Tigers looks to be one that you'll want to see here tomorrow night, whether or not you make the trip as I do to Johnson Central for tonight's first round action for the boys' bracket. Nevertheless, last night it was the ladies' first Two games last night, four teams down to two. We have, of course, two girls teams in the championship. Uh, both of them, of course, going to the 15th region. The question is, that question to be answered later in the week, in what order? It's 57th District Tournament time, and the Lady Eagles of Johnson Central and the Lady Hornets of McGoffin County opened up the tournament last night, and the fans... Didn't lack on enthusiasm, and the teams brought all the intensity that you would expect from 57th District Tournament action. It was McGoffa County's Haley Barnett, which opened up last night with a long, long two, answered right back by Jana Jarvis's three from up top. And this is Sammy Sites with another triple, and she gives McGoffa County a reason to stop, pause, and talk it over. Central went on to open up a 12-5 lead early on, and this basket with the one made it a 15-5 game. And here, here is a first quarter buzzer beater off Ashley Belcher's pass to Jarvis that sent Eagle fans into a frenzy with an 18-5 lead for the Lady Eagles after the first eight minutes of play. The Lady Hornets play tough. Here's Kennedy Stacy for a needed three. And as Central tries to work the ball back into position on their next trip down the court, it will be Alexis Montgomery who makes a clean sweep after a steal and makes a run for the basket. Altogether, a quick five points. But Central didn't look back. 
and they're looking now at the winner of last night's game two for Thursday night's 57th District Championship. Central already with last night's win, of course, earning a trip to the 15th region. 72 to 48, your final score. So the Lady Hornets will wrap up their season at four wins, 25 losses, one and six in the 57th district. Central goes on to a 16 and 12 record, seven and 0. That's undefeated in district play in the regular and postseason. Going on to game two, Sheldon Clark and Paintsville. Sheldon Clark's Paige Maynard opened it up for a big three after about a minute and a half in the game. And from there, the Lady Tigers outscored Sheldon Clark eight to six in the first quarter and 12 to nine in the second quarter for a Tiger lead at the half, 20 to 15. These two teams had faced off twice in the regular season with Paintsville winning 55 to 29 at Paintsville and then Sheldon Clark winning 59 to 48 at Sheldon Clark. Last night's game totally different. This one came down to a three point margin and Sheldon Clark by final score of 39 to 36 advances to a 15 and 12 record shutting down Paintsville who wraps up their season at 15 and 11, setting up a Johnson Central Lady Eagles Sheldon Clark Lady Cardinal Championship Thursday night at 7. Now, before I rush out the door and to Johnson Central yet again, number two of five this week, let's take a look at your local weather forecast. Immediate and not so much farther down the road, brought to you by Licking Valley RECC. 58 degrees for if you want to call nighttime low, nighttime lows, mostly clear skies. It was a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful day in the neighborhood, without a doubt. I hope you got to enjoy it, because if you didn't, you're not going to see one for a while. Temperature-wise, not so bad, but as far as the sun and the wind, which was quite brisk. We were actually doing some work today, or watching some. To, technically, I was watching some being done uh, on the upstairs and on the roof of the building today. And, man, you got up that high, and you really felt the winds coming out of the southwest, much better than the three to six mile per hour average. Tomorrow, we'll see those winds still coming out of the southwest, picking up uh, along with some showers tomorrow. And tonight, nothing more than mostly clear skies. Showers tomorrow, I think your timeline looks to be after 1 o'clock. Highs of around 76. That southwest wind, once again, 5, 10, maybe 15, 18 miles per hour at times when they gust up. New precipitation amounts tomorrow, maybe up to a quarter of an inch, maybe another half inch tomorrow night. But all this is going to add up to possibly three, maybe four inches of total rainfall over the next several days. Thursday, more clouds, more showers. Temperatures take another hit down to 60 degrees for your Thursday. A 40% chance of showers uh, on your Thursday night, but Thursday will be a wet one. Without a doubt, we'll see the showers, the most of which will start to wind down by four or five, maybe another half inch or so of rainfall. Thursday night, once again, lesser chance of showers, but still some light precipitation out there. They'll pick back up again, though, on your Friday. Not so much early Friday. We're not going to see any sun, but only a 20% chance of showers early Friday. By Friday night, a 50% chance, mainly after 11, and then a likelihood into your weekend. And I do mean a likelihood. Showers likely and most likely Saturday, especially after 1 or so. Showers Saturday night. Your highs still in the 70s and 50s. Sunday, showers likely. They might wrap up around noon. Then we see some cooler air come in, comparatively, with a daytime high of only 58. I see, I said only 58. And 36 for your low on Sunday. Monday of next week, I think we're still in the upper 50s, low 60s. And that'll wrap it up for tonight. Basketball is going to wrap up on the district level this week. The region, of course, will cover in parts next week. And then more time will be had for other things. Not necessarily more exciting things because it's hard to beat. But nevertheless, it's been a lot to cover. We'll see you back here tomorrow night for more of your news today, more highlights and more exclusive news and coverage and reports that we're working on that we hope you'll join us for then. Good night and thanks for watching.